I'm sorry. The drive-through meal, the pickup. Oh, good. Meal, everybody. Mm -hmm. yes. at the Center. That was great. Yeah. yeah. It was wonderful. Very, very good things. Okay. Well, um, you all have your agendas, and um, so I want to do that. What we usually do is the um, uh, acceptance of the meet of the minutes first. Eleanor. Well, I've got some. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a correction about um, Eleanor. I'm sure it was an oversight, but I didn't see my suggestion of a website listed among the uh, things that everybody brought up. Ah, I appreciate that. Well, you, you're going to be surprised in a few minutes. So just <laughs> thank you. Spoke too soon. <laughs> Any other changes or adjustments? Okay, shall we add that to the minutes and then approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Now let's get to the treasurer's report. All right. Uh, within the town appropriation account, if you received the email this morning or looking back at the detail that Richard sends to us, we spent a little over 22,000 the month of November um, our primarily personnel costs with the two payrolls, it's where we've been right on budget, um, with the exception of the van driver, which is under, as it's been all year. Other expenses are all falling within or below budget, with, of course, the exception of that newsletter cost, which has been pre-budgeted, basically, pre yeah, encumbered. Uh, within the formula grant, uh, we're down to $675 on expenditures. That's because payroll was pretty much cut in half, both pay periods. Um, as Nellie, I assume it's with Nellie, um, you know, backing down on her hours. And I'm sure Nancy will walk us through what's going to go forward in that going forward. We still have the ice maker that hasn't come through yet, but I know that's another 2100 that will be expended. Revolving fund continues with the yoga, Bob Jackman, ukulele activities, the Thanksgiving drive-through with a balance of 20, a little over 28,000 going forward. And then the gift accounts, we did receive $1,100 in the month of November. Um, a thousand of that came from Social Service League and we spent 5,000 of which 2,500 was paid over to the diversity committee, which we had talked about a couple of months ago. I think we split something, Nancy, you can go through that as well. And um, another 2,500 was paid to the social worker. So we have a balance remaining in the gift funds of over 49,000. Any questions or comments? That's great, thank you. Okay, um, let's move along. Um, Can we accept those? The treasurer's report. Oh, oh right. Uh, do we move to accept the treasurer's report? All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. okay, good. We got it. Got it. Okay, now the next thing is. Um, I'm supposed to, I, I just wanted to say that um, this month I received, um, and I, I need some information on it, um, I was a very thoughtful email from um, regarding affordable housing. And it, I want to know from the people who work with it, is the affordable housing bill is that strictly for, it's not strictly for seniors, is it? it, it, no. it affordable, housing is, affordable housing is um, income-based. It's not right. for any particular group. Yeah. Well, Karen Arante sent me, you know, some thoughts about as we move forward in Cohasset and, but she was of the assumption that, that it would be a senior's um, endeavor. And, I think we can look into the state rule and everything, um, but I think we'll find that we can't be exclusive if we, um, as we try to 
implement some affordable housing. You can have, you can have, uh, you can set aside preferences. The state allows for uh, local preference or veterans or seniors. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, nobody applies and it goes to the next person on the list. So it can't be held open for somebody for a period of time. In right. that group. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything on the affordable housing from the committee that I'm jumping, I'm jumping ahead. Okay. I just wanted to mention that I'd gotten that thoughtful letter from Karen. Um, and I also had a nice talk with Nancy earlier this month and she gave me, I didn't send it to you. I thought we'd discuss it and then I'd send it. Um, she and Nettie got together, they said they would, and they put together our discussion of last month and um, kind of categorized it for us and gave us some direction as to how we should go. So at that point, oh, hi, Rich. That's Rich. Um, so Nancy, I would like you to talk about that as we move forward today. Okay, great. Uh, so I will, uh, do you want me to have my director's report first or would you rather yeah, I jump, yeah, I have you Nettie that, jump on and we talk about that? Letter I had, yeah. Okay, so let, let me just share my screen here. I have my um, report here. All right, and you see this? Yeah. Uh, so uh, we had a, a good month last month. Uh, we were able to uh, service uh, 31 outreach clients. Uh, we are getting pretty busy. Stephanie is doing a great job with the um, social work. Um, there's a lot of um, an uptick in mental health needs. So that's been a huge benefit for us to have Stephanie here as the expert on how to handle those. Uh, situations. Um, we had our drive by and pick up uh, that Elaine had mentioned. It was wonderful. Uh, it, um, so we got, I think it was like for Thanksgiving, we got like 56 people um, alone for that. And everyone loved the, um, loved the lunch. So thank you, uh, Jim. Uh, we had the Zoom programs, transportation, all the shine appointments that were going on and fuel assistance. Um, which was about 182 individuals um, who were serviced and um, between everything that they were doing, a lot of repeats, 723 services and programs. So it was a very busy month. Um, it's not quite what we're up to when we're doing the uh, regular in-house, but uh, it's, it's, it's busy. We're doing a lot behind the scenes. Uh, last week, we had our Toys for Tots drive. Uh, that was really helped out because the town was really behind us and the, um, the police did not do it this year. So we did see a big uh, increase in um, the amount of toys that we got. Um, so we raised over $600 and more than, when I wrote this last week, I had about 60 toys. Then I just heard that um, the police just dropped off a bunch more. So. I can't imagine how many there are now, but um, I'll be delivering delivering them tomorrow uh, to the uh, to Boston so that we can get those toys out to toys or tots for the Marines. Um, the gift baskets uh, were a great success. Everyone loved their little basket. Uh, Jim and Liz, uh, as um, always, have come through for us, and they made uh, cookies. Um, Launch uh, had made some banana bread. Uh, Friends of Elder Affairs had some mugs, um, so you'll see there's new Friends of Cohasset Elder Affairs mugs next time you're in the building. Um, and our delightful Frosty Barrett um, was down at the end of the street um, jumping around. That made a lot of people happy. He had so many smiling faces by the time they came up to drop off their toy. It was a really great day, so um, I was very pleased with the outcome of that. Uh, what else do I have? Um, so what I wanted to um, talk about, and now I'm going to bring, uh, um, let's see. 
Nettie's going to come on board um, and we can talk about this. But the thing that we, uh, Nettie's going to be here online, as you know, uh, as much as possible, still trying to get through uh, to, I know we didn't decide to do it officially to go and get the sort of accreditation, but we do have to work towards it. So she's going to work on that uh, with us. And one of the things that we have to review is our, um, the mission statement um, and also the goals that um, we will uh, talk about. Let me just, sorry, I want to just make sure she's not trying to come in while we talk. Um, no. Okay, I'm gonna get out for a minute. Okay, she's not trying to come in. Um, so as you can read here, um, what we need from you guys is for you to, to um, approve the mission statement. So we can say that we have agreed to a mission statement and as all um, feel that that is still serving uh, what we want to do with the, uh, the Department uh, of Elder Affairs here in Cohasset. Um, I just have one suggestion. Anybody have any comments about that? Have we received the mission statement? It's up on the screen now. It's mission statement of the CEA. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, nice. Okay, glasses time. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 can I say something, Nancy? You sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, I. I to offer outstanding programs that provide for the physical, social, and emotional needs. Um, I would like to say emotional well-being of our older adults only because, I mean, we can't, we can't address specific needs for specific people that, but we can enable them to, to do that. I, that's why, I don't know, I, it just sounded better to me, but I'm, uh, who am I? <laughs> I like that, Tan. I think that makes sense. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Yep, I concur. What do you think, Nancy? Okay. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I think that makes sense. That sounds good. I think this mission statement has been here for years, so um, I see no problem with changing um, that. I think that makes well-being. I like that of the needs as well. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I was just quickly trying to find a copy of our old mission statement um, to see how different this is. Do you know, Nancy, Nancy can you tell us that? I haven't found it. It's on this the is what we, I, I have not changed it. Yeah, it should be on the VISTA. This has been on the VISTA. It for, um, it's on the VISTA mm -hmm. and yeah, okay. every month. All right. But when, for the accreditation process, when we go through each of the standards, we do have to say that the, the board has reviewed it um, because I think every year we're really supposed to review it and make sure that's still in agree that we're all in agreement that this is what we see for the uh, what we want to do for um, the older adults in our population. And everyone does have to um, you know, note that it has, it is going forward and any changes that we need to make every year. So, um, okay. This is, since I've been here five years, as far as I know, that's been the mission statement. Yeah, we put together with, uh, when, when, when um, Lisa Yu came on board, uh, mm -hmm. during the part-time HR, each department in town had to have a, a mission statement. So that's where that got crafted from. Yeah, I remember that process, but I just didn't know what it, finally we settled on. Okay. Okay. So that sounds good. We'll go ahead and change that and then we'll put that in as a, um, that has been accepted by you guys. So thank you. Uh, the next step is, uh, okay, so the goals. Uh, we put together, uh, what we did was we put together what the staff had talked about and what uh, the board had talked about and put them together to say, this is, this is the other thing that we need you guys to take a look at, review, and tell us what you think 
Um, and number one, um, Jim Murphy, is the expand the use of technology. So uh, we all Thank agree, you, Steph agreed. We talked about it in the board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And it's, it's, I think it's, it's a wonderful uh, goal. It's a huge process. Uh, so it won't be done overnight, but it's certainly something we should be doing um, to create a web page for elder affairs for somebody to just go to. Um, that's something I have to check with the town and make sure that that would not be a problem with um, having our own offshoot of the uh, town, town website. But I think it would be uh, beneficial to uh, the community at large to know everything we do, be able to sign up for programs or at least get links to them right off of one uh, web page. Um, nice. The other thing uh, is the providing the on-demand programming and increase our online and social media presence. So um, more Facebook. Um, I know we used to have a Twitter page, but nobody is updating that. Um, so th these are all um, the things that we're going to start working on uh, which we're going to have to have people help us with, but uh, the thought process is there uh, and we do agree that it's an important piece of it. Uh, next is yeah, create would, and implement a marketing plan. Mm -hmm. I would say before you um, put the, the, the web page or website down as a goal, I would find out if we can do it first before we make it a goal. We, um, yeah. we, we tried to do this uh, many years ago we got pushback from you know the town manager about departments having their own web page. You know, I I, um, I remember that we we couldn't do it for I don't know if it was for you know um, reasons to do with uh, being a, a town agency or not. Um, I don't know if Rec has one or not. I, I don't think Rec has their own web page. But we had talked about if we couldn't do it because of the town. Uh, issues, then we would we would do something with uh, friends um, and and do a website together with them. So before we make it a goal, I would I would find out if we're allowed to do it to begin with. Yeah, I, I was going to bring that up. I that remember that from several years ago. We had somebody all set to go with it. That's what she did, and but she was told no. But we were told no for a lot of things in those days. So maybe they've mailed and. Maybe you could, if you could just, we could see what they want to say. Well, I think under COVID, you know, now they realize yeah. that they, they have to rely on this type of media tool. To mm -hmm. create, so. Uh, no, absolutely. I felt it was important to put it down because it is a goal, whether or not we're able to accomplish it right now. Uh, yeah. I don't know, but um, I will find that out. Just. See if I can get Nettie in here. I think she's. I heard something's trying to come in. I just don't know. Is that Nettie barking? <laughs> Is that Nettie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my my dog. She wants to join in. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, let me just see. If... You know, it seems it it seems to me that the rec department has its own website. I mean, it certainly it's easy to get onto that and get all your information and sign up and everything to the rec department and the library also. And yeah, you know, they have one. Talk about us. We, yeah, that's what know, I was going to say. The library has a very organizations, you know, being together, our little campus over there, it seems like we ought to be able to do that too. Yeah. I agree with you, uh, Taffy. And I was thinking about that. Um, even if they want to clear it before we put it up, but it's the only way to keep up. It oh. really is. People have to be able to use it. Hopefully our, uh, you know, all our uh, customers, all our clients will be able to use it and get the information they need and want. So I think that's great. And I think that's up Jim's alley. And I think that's going to be up, up. Why do I say I think that's going to be up? Um, Jim Carpenter's LA too. Um, one thing nice, this is Sarah, one thing nice about the Rec Center website is that at the end of the year, you can run a tally uh, and receive a receipt, a year end statement within the website, which is really nice for tax purposes because certain things are donations, certain things are, in my case, child related expenses, childcare tax deductible. 
Um, and so if you had a donate now tab on your new website, um, it might pay for itself um, with friends or social service link links within it. That's, that's good idea. a good thought. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to get in. I, I apologize. I'm trying to get Nettie in here and you guys off of my. You hear her? Oh, you are you here that I can I let you in and I didn't know it? I'm here. You know what, Nancy? Oh. I, just, I just noticed I'm still logged underneath you from when I was doing the. Um, so my Zoom is you and it says live, laugh, learn from when I was monitoring exercise classes. Oh, and okay. Sorry about that. Welcome. Thank you. That's quite Welcome. all right. All right. And it's not giving me options to change. Okay, so, so um, Nettie, I don't know how much you were here. Yep, I was here the whole time. Okay, that's not a problem. Okay, terrific. So you heard about the mission statement. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna change the wording um, under emotional well-being. Okay. Right. Um, and the technology. Okay. And then I'm going to let you then go on with the um, the other goal so that we can um, okay. get a little bit more insight to what we were thinking on the rest of them. Okay. So for all of you, good morning. Sorry that you don't see me and it's the logo and I can't change it midstream right now. Um, so the second goal, which now these are starting to parallel what we need to do for national certification. One of the things we need to do for national certification is to create and implement a marketing plan. Of the biggest thing of that, which I think maybe once we go through the goals, we'll come back and get your input is for the marketing plan, we need to all discuss, which we can think about it today and know that we're going to discuss it in February or discuss today, um, our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and they all need to be on the marketing plan. And of course, then the marketing plan will springboard from there. The marketing plan also, of course, will target baby boomer participations, participation. The more I read online about senior centers and national certification, they are really addressing the fact that, um, you know, we have older seniors and younger seniors. And sometimes there are, they have obviously different wants and needs. So part of the marketing plan is really to kind of get some of our younger seniors coming into the center or using our services in, a little bit more frequently. Um, next underneath marketing plan is, do we want to keep our department name as elder affairs or discuss something else? Yeah, while you have that point up, uh, uh, so, Tana, do you remember when we went to Plymouth? Yes. And met with their director? Yes. They were, they were in the process of changing their name to a much nicer, um, friendlier name. Can you remember what that name was? No, I can't, but that's something we can, I, I can certainly call and find out. Yeah. So I think... Um, it's, now, it's, now referred to, it's now referred to as the Center for Active Living. Oh. I believe. Okay. Okay. So that's something that we'll look at when we discuss the marketing plan. Yeah. Um, rolling down to the next goal is we want to expand programming and services. And of course, we want to continue to offer more adult learning programs. What we're trying to do, obviously, is give the community what they're asking for or what they tend to um, you know, really get excited about. So uh, adult learning programs, make programming available outside of normal business hours and continue to use Zoom beyond the pandemic. Um, it's really helping us be able to reach people. Um, it's, in, it's interesting to see who comes to programming on Zoom, Zoom versus in person. So we want to, we don't want to lose participants when the pandemic is over and, you know, for those who might not be able to get into the center, et cetera. Um, always looking for new ideas, some ideas that popped up between us talking about goals with the board and the staff are to build a choir, evening speakers, etc. We also want to try to use that beautiful outdoor patio area for programming. 
and increase, this is kind of, it's written where it's hard to say what it means, but increased number of classes held at any given time. Sometimes we might have a class upstairs and one in the gym. So we want to obviously, what's that? So we want to increase the number of classes that we're holding at any given time. So we want to, an example, maybe have one Zoom class going on, an exercise class and an education class all at one time. The next goal um, is the living room area. When you walk into Wilcott Commons on the left, uh, we would like to see that be turned into more of a cafe, almost like when you go to Starbucks and everybody's sitting around reading the newspaper, chit-chatting, hanging out. The living room really doesn't get used a lot. So over the next, these goals are for three to five years. Over the next three to five years, we'd like to discuss how can we um, increase the use of that area. And then of course the last goal is to pursue national accreditation and you all know about that. Um, so before I ask you all about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, any input or feedback on just your initial thoughts of maybe switching up the living room when you walk into Wilcut Commons to get that to be a, a space that it's used more frequently? Any thoughts about that? Yeah, yeah I'd, I, I'd like to see it less less formal. I'd like yeah. to see it more comfy, I guess is the word I would use. Uh huh. I think people would be more inclined to sit around and chat if, um, like, couches are not good for people to be comfortable with. It's more chairs, a rocking chair, things like that. Right. <clears throat> I love hearing you say that. Yeah, it's, it definitely could be more inviting. It feels... Um, you know, like a formal living room. And um, I think that I don't see a lot of people utilizing it except for an occasional puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look terribly inviting. It looks a little bit like, uh, don't go in the living room like my mother used to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, when we opened Wilcott, I said we should make a deal with Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks to switch you know, every whatever, six months, and bring in coffee. So you, when you walk in, it smells like coffee and it's, you know. You're right. right? Yes, I like that. Yeah. I also think down the road, we never will need to lose sight of infection control measures, which is um, right. helpful for individual chairs. Also, when planning those chairs, you know, maybe vinyls back in fashion where we can cleanse everything and provide security that there's been um, nice cleansing measures rather than fabric or other fab uh, you know surfaces that's a great idea yep there are Even, there are purifying um, sprays that you can have I have one here in the house for upholstered stuff too um, um, there are ways to do it I, so I think we should figure out what we want to do and then, do, and then you know, if, if we get, decide what we want to do, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out a way to do it. But I'm glad to hear that you have a good idea. Um, rolling back up to the marketing plan, how would you all like to talk about and when strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of Cohasa Elder Affairs? Want to think about that amongst yourselves and be prepared to talk about it next month. Do you all want to email Nancy or Tana ideas? Do you have any questions or ideas about that today? How would you all like to proceed? Well, maybe you can help me out with the idea about a threat. What, what do you mean I, by I, a threat? I was going to say that. What do you mean by threat? Well, I've got a concern on threats. Oh, can, this I, is can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I, I've, and this is really from the beginning when we opened the building. I think the town's got an itchiness to try to use our space. Yes. And yeah. we need to, you know, I think independently we do the best to keep them away from it. But uh, I think it's, it's something we got to constantly be aware of. Especially if we decide down the road to open on weekends or evenings. That's a great point. Yeah, I agree. So another threat, an example, this could be a threat. If there was a new senior center or a gym opening only for people over the age of 50 on Route 3A in Cohasset, 
obviously there isn't, but that could be a threat to us or um, our acupuncture program or that we do or did, um, you know, that could be a threat if someone else was opening or um, obviously I think we all need to be able to play parallel. So just also um, making sure that there are times when we work together with the rec center in the library, but also times when we work separate and stay in our lanes. Yeah. Okay. Could, could be examples. Yeah, I would be cautious on defining um, threats with uh, programming. We, we, we went to war over that um, for quite a while uh, with the library and the rec center. So um, I don't, it, it took me a long time to convince the prior director that they really weren't threats, that they were just additional venues that people prefer to go to um, in different, you know, different settings. So uh, it's not that we were doing anything wrong and they were doing something right or they were taking our clients and we, we should be doing that here kind of thing. So that it took us a long time to get away from that mindset. So um, I think the biggest threat really is um, stagnation for us um, or complacency, I, I think would be our, our primary threat if there was a threat. And, and to Rich's point, you know, if we're not active doing our own things, um, then the town has the ability to uh, use the center if it's not uh, pushing out anything to do with seniors. And I think this whole past year, because of COVID-19, you know, the town's focused elsewhere. Um, but as soon as we get back to being robust, if we're not um, actively pursuing programming and doing our own thing, then that, that threat still remains. Absolutely. And especially, I mean, one of my um, thought processes in saying that is before COVID-19, and I mean, this is just a matter of opinion. So everybody, you know, we obviously respect each other's opinions. I think the library had a knitting group. Oh, they still do. I think they still do. Okay. But I'm not sure. I mean, certainly not during this time frame. During COVID, they, I don't think they probably do. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So just, I mean, that could be perceived as a threat if everybody decided to leave our, you know, we need to still, I think, make sure that we're courting our seniors and our Friday morning knitting group to stay with us. And I'm not saying they need to stop theirs by any means, but I think we need to make sure that we're giving the good customer service, making sure we're making them coffee and catering to them and, you know, do they need rides, et cetera. So just an example. I think you're absolutely right. Um, and we also have to remember that a lot, of, a lot of these functions that came long before we did, and um, we can't get our nose out of joint because they're not coming to our place, which is what happened before. So I think if we just do our own thing and do exact, excuse me, exactly what Nettie said about Courting our own clientele will be okay. Right. I agree. And just maybe the awareness is, is helpful. Just, yeah. you know, for me to remember, um, we don't take any participation for granted at all. And um, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Excuse me. I recall, uh, remember when that individual from UMass Boston came to speak to us right. and talked about the, the, the movement within senior centers and how um, people go from one to the other. So I think it all comes down, or a lot of it comes down to programming. We have to offer what right. we need to offer. Um, That's a great to of a threat is all the senior centers around us. You're absolutely right. That's yeah. a great example. I think we have a big advantage. We have a beautiful setting. We have lots of room and lots of things we can do. And like, for instance, I would say by March, we should have him plan some really fun things to go on this summer when we're gonna be opening up. Um, you know, we have things that we haven't used at all. And I agree, I think this patio can be used very, very nicely on a time frame that um, younger um, retirees can come and visit and, and have fun, do fun things. Um, and then also, um, I still have a thing about 
the outside activities that we should be able to offer outside activities after four o'clock or 430 in the afternoon. And there's got to be a way that we can do it, whether we get certified to open and close a building um, or things like that. It, we've just got to get it. And I think we have to push with, with um, Chris too, to do some of this in order to bring in younger retirees. And, you know, a lot of people work after 65 and they like to come home and do some things that are different. So I, I, I really think by March, we really need to look at something fun and exciting coming in for an opening this summer. That's and very well know. taken, Diana. Yeah. Tana, yeah. I have got to leave early because I have to go in and find the St. Francis house in Boston to drop mm -hmm. off some things for Christmas. So okay. I'm going to take off and uh, get in town before it sleeps for me this afternoon. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And your ideas are wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, I think about the shuffleboard outside. I think it never got used. And it was it was kind of like silly reasons, but nobody pursued it. And yet it's things that guys really like to do. They're competitive. They like to get out and do things like that. <laughs> it's know, true, you know that. Yeah. You can also have people coming home from work going over to the patio and offering them, well, we can't do wine, but you could do iced tea and stuff like that and just to unwind and uh, maybe a game of shuffleboard or have a chess thing set up or something. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, we can certainly, use, we haven't used the outdoor patio at all. Okay. I, think, I think during the day in the summer, it very often gets just too hot. And there's people we can invite, you know, we have people in town that are very talented that um, would yeah. probably easily come early in the evening. And and um, uh, I'm thinking of Chronicle. I mean, we all, we have the guy right in town. I mean, there's things that people would love to come and listen to what his ideas are. Or, or he, you may say to him, would you like some ideas back from the public and have people come? You know, there's just, just a lot that you can do. Yeah. The other one that I see in Duxbury all the time that's a roaring success is they have memberships and with different theaters in Boston and people can come in, they're working people, but they can come in after five o'clock and sign up or they can sign up online to go to plays. And it's amazing the amount of people because they have limited amount of tickets and those 50 tickets go quick for people that want to go into the theater um, that want transportation in and out and um, so there's things like that we've started to do, but we need to continue to do yeah. it. You know, our bus trips were good and everybody loved them. So we need to get back on the bucket there and do them. Thank you, Diana. You're welcome. I'm off to Boston. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Bye-bye. So Nancy, popping back and the board, the, any comments about the goals overall? Any I mean, do, would you accept these goals as is? Would you like to add any goals? Of course, we talked about it at a previous <laughs> board, but add, subtract, accept. And then once we accept the goals, the next step is to um, write objectives and an action plan with time frame to follow. But just to focus on the goals, number one, and then number two, how to proceed with strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, that discussion. Uh, I Go ahead. Jim. Yeah, I think uh, one, one thing that's uh, missing from uh, um, marketing, if you will, is the ability to constantly surveil other uh, senior centers. I don't know if that calls for a subcommittee. Um, I don't I'll know. I'll make basically, that part of the action plan, Jim. Thank you. Basically, somebody... Um, uh, basically, I think we ought to be looking at other senior centers on a on a on a constant basis um, and seeing what they're doing. Okay, I'll make sure that's in the action plan. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that could be our anti-threat committee. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I also know. think we shouldn't go into it uh, so negatively. I mean, we might find that there's ways we can collaborate with some of the other centers to do things that maybe just a few of their people want to do and a few of our people want to do. Exactly. And have a group. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. It, it may be positive on both we, sides. We do do that. 
Oh, I know we you do that. We collaborate. We, we have a lot of discussions. Yeah, with other senior yep. centers, we try to, in order uh, <coughs> to get both centers or three centers to get more participants. Uh, so I feel that we we do work together to try to get um, what people want. Um, and I don't feel, especially as we go, you know, as everybody gets busier, we work better together. Uh, and we know, you know, the end goal is to just make the older adults um, more educated, stimulated, uh, active. So I think it's at least going in the right direction. And yeah, they call that OFI, which is opportunity for improvement. Yeah, it, 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 it can work. And I definitely think that has to be included in, in the marketing and the planning and the program planning. So anybody else? I have participated in two um, other senior center programs uh, recently, and they were the participants were from all different towns, mm -hmm. and it was really great. And the birding one, I think, no, it was the poetry one. I got the information through Richie. He had attached it as a link at the Hingham. Um, I don't recall where birding was coming from, but a lot of different people, and they were very successful programs. They were terrific. Yeah, I participate in a um, Hingham World Affairs discussion group, mm -hmm. uh, which is very good. Um, I yeah. used to shoot pool at the Weymouth Center, <laughs> since they have pool tables. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our pool tables in storage. Just I know. In. <laughs> they also play cards table? sometimes. That doesn't take up much space. Yeah, what about cards? Oh. At Weymouth plays cards still. They're known as quite fun. I donated, um, I donated a poker table. It's upstairs in the loft. <laughs> and uh, so they're at the center. Tom but a compliment. I, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Jim. No, Tom and I saw Bridge down at Plymouth. Hi. In, in a very big, uh, big way. I am um, visit oh, have, other seniors. No, go, sir. go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I visit other senior centers a lot with my with my clients and um, I have lots of compliments. I think our telephone service particularly shines. I think you're um, Nancy, the senior center is far more approachable than the others. I call everyone from Plymouth Kingston all the way up to Quincy Weymouth and um, and go visit also. And I really am so impressed. I think our customer service and friendliness rates very high. So that's a compliment, long overdue. Well, that's great to hear. Thank you, that's wonderful. We, we do try mm -hmm. we do try to make sure that people do feel welcome. Um, but just to, uh, just to get back to the cards and, and we, were, we were having a Friday drop in cards um, as well as we do the mahjong and the um, cribbage. Uh, so we're picking up on the cards and before the pandemic, I think more people would see that it was more of a routine and that they could get their friends and come. And hopefully we will pick that back up again after, the, after we get back to our new normal. Well, Did you know you can play virtual cribbage and virtual? Um, there's lots of games that are virtual with groups. We, our family plays them across the country, card games. Oh, cool. We even play them in the same room because that way you don't have to stand up and touch the card and sit. You can just relax on the sofa. It's like, it's, it's fun. <laughs> it's really fun. Serious. We play euchre, relaxed <laughs> in the same room <laughs> with our own iPads. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things, yeah, online we could do. We're having an, uh, we're going to be having, um, you'll see, I think it's February 1st, we're having an online game uh, that they're going to be doing intergenerational. So I think that will be fun for a lot of people and hopefully people will take advantage of it and, and um, make it expanded and make it really um, happen. But it's some sort of a, it's, you use slides and it's at games. Um, I'm not quite understanding it completely till I see it in action, but um, I think that, it, you know, people, once they get uh, to try it, that they'll like it. Is that and the it's one always that, good to have it with the young, young um, high schoolers. Is that the one that Steve Devaney is involved in? Nancy? Yes. Okay. Good. 
So any more feedback on the goals? And then the final question is, how do we want to proceed on the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats? Thoughts on goals? Want to look on, at on the goals, is there a way, and I'm not sure how to do this, but maybe the VIST is the, the tool, but is there a way to, to solicit some input from uh, the folks that use the center? Especially when we think about what we want to do in the summer outside, outdoors. We've got plenty of time to plan that if we get started now and, and get some input from the people who use it, what they'd like to see or do. That's a great idea. And that's Nancy's um, newsletter in the VISTA this week is, or this month rather, it has these proposed goals and it requests feedback from anyone in the community. That's great. Um, in, in yeah, the hopefully we will get people to read it and respond. So uh, one thing on the VISTA, uh, I get it electronically. Uh, I know I can always go to the town website and uh, find my way to the Vista, you know, the latest edition. However, I think sending out a reminder email to all those who are signed up for electronic Vista uh, would be helpful uh, just to let people know that it's it's hit the press, so to speak. I get that online. I get the notice. You get you get it. Oh, okay. Then I must email. Yeah, Jim, if you're not. Uh... Yeah, if you're not um, on, and I'll make sure I'll check with Diane because she keeps the um, the master list. We yeah. remind people and we send them a link, um, so you don't have to go in through the town website. Okay, I must be missing. Send it to you directly. Yeah, I must be missing that. Okay. Um, I'm thinking. Maybe I'll make Jim, sure you're on it. Maybe you. Jim is saying. Uh, you could correct me if I'm wrong. When my issue, I get it both ways. Um, Oh, sorry about the phone. Um, I think you said you read it once and then you put it aside and you forget about it. Like, and I know specifically I was something I wanted to sign up for. And then when I thought of it, I was already too late. Maybe if you send out to your electronic people, maybe on the 10th of the month, don't forget you got your Vista and if things you want to do, you need to sign up at it. So you can always go on my active center when you think of it and you can sign up. So anytime there's something, you can go right on there, sign up, enroll, and then you're good. Um, okay. Is that what you mean? Or do you well, no, want I've reminders that you I've signed up? I've never accessed that. Um, you know, just the date, like the date has gone by. Yeah. You know, when I thought of it, uh -huh. I thought, oh, crap, I wanted to do that. And then I looked and it was like, oh, no, you're too late. <laughs> the time's gone and this time. is exactly where the the website idea comes in if all this stuff was concentrated in one place it would be so simple to to do that stuff without having to worry about my active center the town website or you know all those multitudes of things yeah i i guess we don't want you know there's a lot of email flying around um that that, that we can get over email. Yeah. So I'm going to roll back to Rich Hines' comment. Um, so we don't want to approve the goals today. We want to obviously wait another month and see if anyone responds to Nancy based on her request in the VISTA, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And then yeah. for the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, what do you think is the best way for us to gather that information? Do you want to think about it and be prepared at the next board meeting? Do you want to send emails to Tana or Nancy or what, what, how would you like to proceed? Would it make sense for a summary to be sent out to all of us of everything we've agreed upon um, today and add in the strengths, weaknesses, threats, et cetera, that have been identified, and then we will respond to that, to increase it, you know, make our comments on that. And then we can Thank you, May. That's good. <coughs> we can come back next month and then discuss it. Yeah. And I was going to ask you to send out a printout of what's on the screen right now. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you, Thank Betty. You um, I, this is great. And I think if we have a framework with, with which, you know, we're not married to this. So we'll work. And if there's more things we need to add to it or implement, we can do it. But at least we have a framework now. And I, exactly. I think that's very helpful. Yep. And, and then it also, one, once we get the objectives and the action <laughs> steps, it will be easy to, you know, obviously report to everyone our progress and also get help from each, you know, in the areas. Yeah, oh, excellent. Right. Thank you, Nettie. Well done. Yes. Yeah, we appreciate your moving us yeah. along, Nettie. How yeah. are things in Pennsylvania? Life is pretty good. Um, it's more snow here, of course, Cohasset being right on the coast. We yeah, didn't we much, but so I think on Wednesday, we're supposed to get 14 inches. It's Ooh. snowing now. So I forgot the joy of snow. Yeah. <laughs> but you, don't, you don't have to be a, a snowbird to go to Florida. You can always go to Cohasset and get out of it. <laughs> Some of us in Cohasset go to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> And right. we've, uh, we we also heard from Tom Brady saying that he was a Southern California boy and really disliked his time no, in he the cold New England weather. I think the phrase was he wouldn't be caught dead living yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Dead. A little, little, little stronger. That's fine by me. <laughs> well, I, I like your winter weather better than the winter weather here, so... <laughs> All right, well, Nettie, you, have, you haven't been gone long, but I miss you already. We all miss oh, that. Oh, thank you. I'll be back. <laughs> okay, why don't we talk next, the meeting next month. Everybody, um, we'll get copies of all this and, and uh, kind of a summary of what went on today. And uh, we'll work from there. In the meantime, everybody can start thinking about where they want to plug in. Yeah. As we work towards this, okay? That's good. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. Bye, Nettie. Bye, Nettie. Okay, that's good. We've got something to move forward to. Yep. Okay, so the next step is we'll wait for uh, a printout and then we can get to work for our next meeting, okay? Sounds good. January 11th? Uh, yes, the se second, uh, you know, the second Monday. And we're still at on Zoom. We, we're not coming back yet, so. Oh, yeah. This, uh, this is the worst. This is the worst. It's going to be the worst month going, so. Yeah. I hope everybody's been healthy. Knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Nancy, can we come back? Full screen. Can we? Can we come back to full? Oh, yeah, I'm. <laughs> I would to be able to help oh. you do that. Uh, help, but I don't know how to. Oh, okay. Do you know how to do that? I have no oh, idea how to do that. Oh no! Am I stuck here forever? Yeah. <laughs> The way I the way I thought it was is not it. So I've been fooling around up here. Uh, sorry if I've been distracted, but I don't know how to get us back. I will have to practice that for next month. <laughs> um, okay, I can can um, Taffy. Can you tell us how things are going with the Tredis House? Is there anything happening? Oh yes. Yep. Uh, no, definitely. Um, it's it's basically it's done. Um, oh, it's wonderful. Working on a punch list of very minor things. Um, uh, we're we're probably Sarah. I've said this every meeting. I think next week, probably the beginning of next week, we will do a very small uh, ribbon cutting um, ceremony. We can't have more than twenty five, and um, that's basically when we had our groundbreaking in the middle of December, we had more than 25. So it's just gonna be very small photo op, hopefully. Um, and we'll do something much more major in the spring. But um, the, the, we have a beautiful sign that was donated, um, naming it Kate's house that will be put up next week. And- um, who, who donated it, Taffy? Who donated it, uh, Kate 
uh, Luna's family. Kate was our executive director, and the house is being named after her, being named Kate's house. And uh, David Hassan did that beautiful sign. David Hassan. Um, so that's so that will be it. And they will hopefully be moving in to that. The, the clients will be moving in there in the beginning of January. Oh, that, that sign that. is viewed as you come in past the police station on the right or the fire station. The um, so yes, so if you come in that driveway by the police station and you look to the right, there are three one story well, one's a duplex, and a, the new one is a single one story building. Okay, and the sign will be on that building by the front door, mm -hmm. and that will be called Kate's house. The other two are not named, so we, we are hoping the sign won't be too obtrusive and in the face of the other people. That don't. Oh, here you are. Um, but it's, hey. all, it's all in and um, the paving is done, the lines, everything. So it's um, it's ready to go. And do you have clients to move in? Yeah, well, we're not responsible for who moves in there. Mm. Um, that's uh, Department of Developmental Services. I see. Is responsible for that, but I believe they do have the people they know who they're going to move in there. They do the furnishing and everything also. Good. We Good. just provide the building and the appliances. Um, and it's beautiful. And they're, they're thrilled with it. Um, oh, good. Yeah, they're very happy. And the staff of in the other two houses, some of them will be coming from the two houses that are already there. And there'll be new people coming in too. And so as far as 60 Elms concerned, um, so far we you know, we've remained, as far as we know, COVID free. And I think we would know if we didn't, but we're spending a lot of time and energy on um, sanitizing. We ramped it up again last week so that we're doing it every day. And, um, but most of that's being reimbursed by the state, which is great. Um, and Launch uh, has done some nice decorating. They put up a couple of outdoor Christmas trees and I think they're putting up some wreaths and um, they, there, we are going to provide uh, gift bags to all the residents next week from the board. And then I think um, I know Blanche is doing a dinner right after uh, the week between Christmas and New Year's. They're going to provide a dinner, and uh, Social Service League is doing dinners before Christmas. And you know, we're doing the best we can, but we feel very badly that the people there are so isolated, and there's not a whole lot that we can do. Yeah. We are, I should just mention the emergency. I think we talked about that last month. We, we have found out that um, Weymouth is going to op will open their shelter if we have a, a major storm and we will be able to transport people to Weymouth to the shelter. They, they have much more space so they can socially distance people in the shelter. And so uh, we're We've sent out um, to try, and Nancy has also to all the seniors in town to be sure that everybody has a plan if they lose power for an extended period of time. And if they don't, if they're going to need help, we need to know about it. So that's all in the works. It's a committee that's working on that, and that's been very helpful. And hopefully, we won't have a big storm. Yeah. So they've, there's no thought of doing it here in Cohasset. Um, for Deer Hill or uh, no? Well, Nancy, maybe you want to address that. This talk about trying to do more with the senior center for our warming center, but we don't have the capacity to be a real shelter for overnight. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of strict regulations. Yeah, right. Number. Right. Well, we won't be the shelter, but um, right. there would be, uh, depending on if emergency management wanted to open, uh, Wilcott would be a warming center so people yeah. could come in during the day, but oh. they'd either have to go to the shelter at night or in Weymouth and get transported there or go back to the home overnight and then come back to the warming center during the next day. So it, it, when you're looking at Weymouth, though, now. it's, it's uh, not a uh, beta complete. It, it depends on whether school's in session. Uh, they've got an elaborate setup for a shelter uh, at the high school, but it implies that the high school is empty. Um, <clears throat> so that's been a problem in the past, and they have to basically decide they're going to open it. 
and they open it in conjunction with the Red Cross. So uh, it services much much more than than Cohasset. It's pretty much uh, seven or eight communities in the, on the South Shore. Um, so Glenn is very in touch with them as we need it for uh, emergency management. Uh, but again, it's that it's not. You just do this. You got You got to work at it and see where it's going to happen. We've used uh, Hull in the past too. And we did it a couple of years ago over yeah. Deer Hill. Well, yeah, we can, but I mean, it's yeah. very difficult. And like, I, like uh, someone brought up, the regulations are quite tight. Right. Yeah, I don't uh, think that we can do it anymore. That's my. Uh, and Deer Hill doesn't have enough space for so they're they're generating power is not big good enough. We talked about the library and Deer Hill, and um, in order in the time of COVID, the spacing is such an issue. It is. Yeah, you're right. And Weymouth has apparently um, got the, their whole high school. It's a new high school, and they have it. The plan, if, you know, as Rich said, if they're not in school, they could make the whole building available for sheltering. And for animals as well. Yes, and animals. Yep. Yeah. So we have not had a lot of people say they needed help. Now, whether that means they're not responding or they don't need help, that's, we don't know. You know, we're pushing them again this month to, you know, please tell us what your plan will be if we have an extended power failure. So. Okay. So Tana, uh, do Hi. you want to, uh... Do we want to think about any speakers who could update us? Um, liaisons for yes. next time? Yes, I, I do. I called Diane Kennedy and she, this is her busy season at work and she's, so um, I think I'm going to try and get her to come in. And who else? Um, I've been putting poor Kathy on the spot because, because I've been supporting her. She's done this for, I don't know how many years, and I'm waiting for that door to open. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it's finally happening. And um, did you want me to get um, a safety officer in there, either uh, Chief Quigley or Bob Sylvia? I, I don't know. I just I'm, I'm just suggesting it. Uh, yeah. And Karen Arante was on our uh, Q and A down below, and I don't know that she's still listening. She was in a listen mode. Uh, we set this call up as a, uh, uh, not as a Zoom meeting, but as a, uh, what do we call it? A, uh, we webinar? Webinar. Uh, is that something new? Yeah, I noticed it today too. I don't know yeah. what. Yes, that is something. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, this is something oh, that, the, yeah, yeah, the town. Karen just joined. Karen, I apologize if you if you I've been, been here. Can you hear if you've been on but not able to talk. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. now we can hear you. Oh, oh, but I've been listening all along, so I'm glad you didn't say anything bad about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I I've been observing, but I've been challenged here, so technically challenged, but anyway. <laughs> My apologies, Karen. I think that was from the beginning when um, so, uh, Justine let everybody uh, in, and then I came in and just got overlooked. Okay, so that's fine. We will that's be good. do better next month, I hope. Yeah, I, I, uh, you know, going back to our goals, I don't know whether uh, there are a lot of people out there that have uh, lost out uh, in this Zoom calling and and. Uh, We've noticed it in the men's discussion group where people um, just dropped out. You know, active members who came every week uh, just didn't make the switch for whatever reason, a couple different reasons, so. And is, that the, is this webinar um, the same thing for all the Zoom classes as well? This format webinar? No, just for the board meetings. Okay. Now, is that just so other people can tune in, if you will, but not participate? 
right? I think it's because they have more control over more people being able to come on to the uh, the meeting and listen in, be like, um, or be a panelist and be allowed to talk. So there's more control over it this way. Okay. Okay. Okay, so next month I will try and get, um, well, we have a lot to do, but I'll, I'll have a couple of uh, liaison, tell them they have three minutes and that's it. And Taffy, I won't bother you again <laughs> next month. So does anybody else have anything they want? A, a new business, any questions? No.